This is a different kind of war. There are no marching armies or solemn declarations. It is guided by North Vietnam and it is spurred by Communist China. And there are great stakes in the balance. This then, my fellow Americans, is why we're in Vietnam. On August 7th, 1964, North Vietnamese torpedo boats attacked two American destroyers in the Gulf of Tonkin, prompting the U.S. Congress to pass the Southeast Asia Resolution, which authorized President Lyndon B. Johnson to increase U.S. military presence in Vietnam. However, after the deployment of American combat troops into Vietnam, the public began to question the government's motives in the region. An anti-war movement started to rise among the American youth, fueled predominantly by their values of internationalism and peace. The movement quickly escalated into a nationwide conflict that faced opposition from pro-war conservatives, which compromised national unity and ultimately restrained the government's abilities to take action in Vietnam. The anti-war movement began on college campuses, where members of a new left organization called Students for a Democratic Society began to organize teach-ins to educate people about their opposition to American involvement in the Vietnam War. At the beginning of the year, the majority of Americans still supported Johnson's decision to deploy combat troops into Vietnam. But increasingly as time goes on and the war goes on and the sign, the guideposts of what winning looks like keep shifting and more and more young people are dying and stories about the atrocities that are taking place in the war are coming back to Americans at home, for a lot of people it becomes far less tenable to believe that the war is winnable and that the war is necessary. Most activists believed that the North Vietnamese were nationalistic and were trying to rid themselves of foreign powers in their country, while the government took the stance that the North Vietnamese were communist aggressors that threatened American security and South Vietnamese freedom. Many conservative Americans sided with the government and also shared conflicting views with the anti-war activists, as they believed the Vietnam War to be a necessary process to contain communism. Although pro-war activists supported the government, their conflict viewpoints with the anti-war activists compromised American unity. And on October 21st, 1967, one of the most significant anti-war protests took place, as its magnitude led President Johnson to deny General Westmoreland's request for 206,000 more troops in Vietnam. Robert McNamara, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, said that there may be a limit beyond which many Americans would not permit the United States to go. The picture of the world's greatest superpower, killing or seriously injuring 1,000 non-combatants a week while trying to pound a tiny, backward nation into submission is not a pretty one. The media also had a large role to play in the anti-war conflict, causing many Americans to turn against the war. The news media definitely had a huge influence on the American public. They could uh, pinpoint things that they wanted them to see, like they would put that into the living room or dining room of the American family. It could be very adverse, but it's, it unfortunately was out of context, and a lot of it had an anti-American spin to it. The movement was also influenced when well-known leaders in politics, business, and sports started publicly denouncing the war. My intention is to box to win a clean fight, but in war, the intention is to kill, 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 and continue killing innocent people. On January 31, 1968, Ho Chi Minh of North Vietnam attacked over 100 cities in South Vietnam. Although this attack came as a surprise, the U.S. and South Vietnam were able to shut down Minh's forces in just two days. These attacks, which came to be known as the Tet Offensive, sparked more anti-war protests nationwide. One reason for this was the fact that journalists published reports that made it seem like the offensive was a success for North Vietnam. By early February of that year, a Gallup poll showed that 50% of Americans disapproved of the Johnson administration's handling of the war. Although activists had succeeded in earlier years in restraining the president from escalating the war, their actions also justified the conservatives' viewpoint that America was desperately in need of law and order. Richard Nixon won the 1968 presidential election and promised to restore law and order to the nation. 
One way that Nixon tried to do this was by instituting the first U.S. draft lottery since World War II. However, more than half a million young men resisted the draft. Some refused to register, and others burned draft cards in reported public ceremonies. An organization called Vietnam Veterans Against the War became involved in the conflict, and televising of its members throwing away the medals they had won during the war moved more people to join the movement. There were a lot of really dramatic protests that the vets led, and these had a big impact on people, because the presumption is these guys were there, they know what this war is about. The selective service system became frustrated and disheartened, as the lack of American support of the war was continuing to compromise the strength of American forces in Vietnam, and Nixon was forced to abolish the draft and institute a volunteer-only army. In response to the increasing conflict on the home front, Nixon addressed the nation on November 3, 1969, to reach out to and unite the Americans whom he believed were silent supporters of his policy in Vietnam. And so tonight, to you, the great silent majority of my fellow Americans, I ask for your support, because let us understand, North Vietnam cannot defeat or humiliate the United States. Only Americans can do that. Activists responded to this speech with the largest anti-war demonstration in American history. However, Nixon pledged to continue the war and declared that he would not permit U.S. policy to be dictated by minorities staging demonstrations in the streets. Nixon's continuation of the war resulted in the invasion of Cambodia in April of 1970, which sparked new conflicts on college campuses nationwide. On May 4, 1970, four students were shot and killed at Kent State University. So if one of the anxieties about going to Vietnam is what happens to our soldiers when they're asked to fight in this environment where they are required to dehumanize other people, Kent State asked us to think, what is happening to our society in the midst of this war that we could imagine our government shooting down students for engaging in an act of political protest? After the shootings, the May 1970 student strike forced the temporary closure of colleges and universities nationwide. Nixon sought to contain the resulting conflicts by lessening American involvement in Vietnam. Through his new policy called Vietnamization, Nixon increased the amount of weapons and training given to South Vietnam and intensified raids and bombing. As the military slowly withdrew from the war and handed more responsibility over to the South Vietnamese, America's control of the war's outcome was ultimately compromised. However, anti-war activists were dissatisfied by Vietnamization and tried to dislodge it by building a strong political force. Activists developed a new nationwide organization called the Indochina Peace Campaign, and Graham Martin, the last U.S. ambassador in South Vietnam, blamed the IPC's lobbying efforts for eliminating the funds needed to forestall the final North Vietnamese offensive, and Nixon was forced to announce the end of U.S. military involvement in Southeast Asia in January of 1973. The war in Vietnam officially ended two years later, on April 30, 1975, when Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam, was captured by the North Vietnamese Army. Another major breakthrough was made by anti-war activists when students observed that young Americans were legally old enough to fight and die for their country, but were not permitted to vote. This idea led Congress to pass the 26th Amendment. Although the Vietnam War was not considered to be a military success for America, the public's actions on the home front resulted in a changed nation. The constant conflict and criticism instigated by these young activists on the home front led to revolutionary changes in the voting and draft systems that still exist today. However, the anti-war conflict compromised social and political unity during wartime, as it divided those who believed in traditional moral values and ideas of patriotism from Americans who wanted to move toward more liberal ways. Even with this divide, the majority of Americans believed that the U.S. did not stand on a moral high ground during the war, which resulted in a tense, disunited relationship between political leaders and citizens, eventually compromising the government's ability to intensify intervention in Vietnam. Nonetheless, Activists succeeded in enacting peace among nations through conflict on the home front, and although the Vietnam anti-war movement compromised American unity during and after wartime, 
it ultimately led to impactful changes in U.S. society and foreign policy that are still in place today.